Teams benefiting from the buyout market continues. According to an ESPN report, the Lakers are closing in on a deal with big man Andre Drummond, who agreed to a buy with the Cavaliers on the remainder of his $28 million contract. Drummond is a double-double machine, averaging 17.5 points, 13.5 rebounds in 25 starts this season with Cleveland. Drummond can step right into the Lakers' starting lineup. LeBron expected to miss the next three to five weeks because of a high ankle sprain, while Anthony Davis is still a ways away. Get some instant analysis here. Welcome to CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder. Andre Drummond headed to L.A. Bill, what's your reaction, and how does this help the Lakers right now and then in the postseason? Yeah, a couple of reactions, Akeem. The first is this is the reality, right? In the buyout market, love it or hate it, the way that it works is that if you get bought out and you have value, you're going to go to one of the teams that are legitimate and absolute championship contenders. You can kind of pick your best shot at a ring. We've seen it in Brooklyn a couple times over. Now we're seeing with the Lakers, and it, it certainly makes sense for L.A. I can tell you, just talking to sources here in Los Angeles, as you'd imagine, they should be. They are very nervous, not about the playoffs, but about falling to a 6, a 7, an 8 seed with the absence of LeBron and Anthony Davis over the coming weeks. And Drummond's a guy that helps him in the short term. Easy buckets, and you said it, one of the best rebounders in the game. And he's certainly an important level of depth once they get their two stars back. So for Los Angeles, it's a no-brainer. How, how does he fit right into that starting lineup? I mean, they're just not particularly impressed. I mean, look, there's a lot of nice ways that I could say it, but I'll, I'll quote one of the sources that I talked to on the periphery of that Lakers organization who said without LeBron James and without Anthony Davis, they're just not a very good basketball team. They don't have a lot of talent. Now, you talk about Drummond as a guy who can get points and get buckets coming from one of the worst teams in the NBA. He's a big man. He'll step into that starting lineup, and he'll give you an opportunity, ironically, against the Cavs the other night to try and actually win games against bad teams. I mean, this is a guy who can get you buckets, who can get you rebounds, and he will be, especially in the absence of those two guys who facilitate for people around them, he will be the best big man on that team by a long stretch. And let me add this too, Montrez Harrell, who's still there, hasn't exactly loved being in Los Angeles. It hasn't been a great fit from a personality perspective. And so, not that he's not playing well, his actually per 36 minute numbers are pretty amazing, or at least very, very good for what you expect from Harrell. But you bring in another person, another big man, another tough guy, who's going to be pretty excited to be a Laker. That's important down this stretch without those two stars. Yeah, Lakers got right against the Cavs on Friday, snapping a four-game slide. Of course, Andre Drummond did not play in that game. And the reigning NBA champs are no longer the favorites to repeat. The Nets are now the favorites to win the title, who have never won an NBA title. And they're loading up for sure for a title run. They made another move on Saturday. Uh, they agreed to a deal with big man LaMarcus Aldridge, a seven-time All-Star, now joining Blake Griffin as the latest former All-Star headed to Brooklyn via this buyout market. What do you make of the move to acquire LaMarcus Aldridge? I, I, the, what I make is that the rich get ridiculously richer. I, I know that Blake Griffin was a really good storyline and, and a big addition. He's played well for the Nets. This is a much bigger deal, Akeem. And LaMarcus Aldridge is, is, frankly, a better player. Again, he didn't play a lot of minutes in San Antonio. Didn't really fit, especially at the end of his Spurs tenure. And we know that Greg Popovich, the head coach, will play guys limited minutes. So you're talking very few minutes, around 24, 25 a game for Aldridge. But again, if, if you look at his per 36-minute numbers, not only are they markedly better than Blake Griffin's when Blake was in Detroit, they're almost as good. You can make an argument if you factor in the fact that he shoots three-pointers now. They're better than the first four, four and a half years that LaMarcus Aldridge was in Portland when he blossomed to an actual superstar. You talk about depth. You talk about a guy that wants to compete. You talk about somebody who a few years ago was highly coveted by everybody in the NBA. It's a, it's a miraculous level of depth and a lot of talent added to a team that's already got a lot of talent and a superstar that used to be who now is a guy that can come in, play well. You play him 15 minutes, you're going to get a lot. You play him 25 minutes, you're going to get a lot. It's, um, it's almost obnoxiously overwhelming how much talent the Nets have and how much they've attracted even in the buyout market. Well, this team was already super, and now, and now it gets even better. I mean, you, you add Blake Griffin on the buyout market, then we get LaMarcus Aldridge here. And I know, Bill, you're a big fade the Nets guy, but the Nets are now favorites to win the NBA title, which they've never done in franchise history. Do you still want to fade the Nets, or maybe you're starting to think, hey, let me, let me start back in Brooklyn? Yeah. I know. Maybe just paid me. I, I was talking to a, I was talking to a league executive the other day who I hadn't spoken to Akeem in, in probably a month and a half. And I, the last time we talked, I told them I fade the Nets thing and sort of why, and they were with me. And before I could get a question out on the phone, it was, 
have you have you turned around on the nets? Or are, are you with me? Have you just turned the other direction? Because the reality is, you, they're so talented. I, I'll just say this: fade the nets. No, I do think there's an insane range of possibilities from. They win an NBA championship in the level of the Warriors a few years ago where they lose a single game on their way to doing it. I still think from injury or, or personality conflicts or an untested head coach and Steve Nash, they could disappoint in a second round. But I'm not going to be putting any money where my mouth is any longer because you're right. It's just, especially when, when those three go, when Kevin Durant's back and he and Harden and Kyrie on the floor together, outside of a LeBron James team, it's just it's hard to even fathom who beats them in a seven-game series if things go the way that they're supposed to? Well, they're certainly loading up for a title run, and we know James Harden certainly thinks himself as an MVP, saying, I am the MVP on Friday. So uh, we'll see how this shakes out in Brooklyn. Now the favorites to win the NBA title. Bill Ryder joining us here with the latest on CBS Sports HQ. And as I mentioned, here's a look at those latest odds. The Nets now jumping the Lakers as the favorites to win the Larry O'Brien Trophy at plus 260. Lakers at plus 285. Followed by the Clippers at plus 550 and the Bucks and Jazz at plus 800 and plus 900, respectively. Again, the Nets have never won an NBA title in franchise history.